Thanks, Mike. Now the wait is almost over for the families of these 12 victims. They are one step closer to finding out if they'll get justice. It has been nearly three years since they were shot and killed in an Aurora movie theater, and the jury deciding the sanity of the man who shot them will begin deliberations tomorrow. Here's a live look inside the courtroom right now where lawyers for the defense are nearing the end of their closing arguments. It's been fascinating to listen to. Prosecutors have already presented their case and will get a chance to rebut what the defense is saying before this portion of the trial wraps up. 7 News investigator Teresa Marchetta tracking these final arguments for us today. And Teresa, it was intense in that courtroom. And George Brockler ending his case much like he started it. Interwoven in his closing arguments, the stories of each of the victims accompanied by some 850 slides and a PowerPoint that reinforced the prosecution's claim that the shooter was sane, had the capacity to act, and knew right from wrong when he murdered 12 people. He detailed the shooter's activities leading up to that horrific day, pointing out how the confessed killer used deception in his relationships, patience with his purchases, even shopping sales for ammo, and methodical planning and preparation, referencing how he cased the theater beforehand. And also, his time spent on the gun range. He also says the steel bullets the shooter chose show clear intent, none of which Brockler says can be confused with insanity. Do not confuse mental disease or defect with moral obliquity. The idea that someone just simply rejects society's norms and standards. Colorado could have had a law that says... If you have a mental disease or defect that grossly impairs your ability to understand reality, that's it. Game over. Didn't do that. Instead, they said, you need more. You need to have it be such that it affects your capacity to know right from wrong and your capacity to form the intent to act. Again, that's District Attorney George Brockler. He also went after the defense experts, pointing out they all have four things in common. They were handpicked by the defense. None of them, he points out, are professionally certified. All have worked exclusively for criminal defenses in the past. And all changed their practices because of limitations placed on them by defense attorneys. The defense attorney, though, now getting his turn, working hard in his closing to shift the focus to the shooter's mental illness. We'll have much more on that coming up for you on 7 News at 6. 7 News reporter Mark Stewart, though, in the courtroom until just a short time ago. Mark, what can you tell us about the atmosphere as things are starting to wrap up here? You know, Teresa, watching this trial on television, the courtroom looks so big, it looks so expansive. But when you're sitting there in person, it's actually very small. It's almost an intimate setting. From my position, I am able to see the jury, the gunmen, as well as the family members whose loved ones were either killed or injured. And today has simply been emotionally heavy duty. They have heard stories about their loved ones, about their friends, and about many of the other victims who were in the theater that night. Jessica Gawi's mother was there. She's been there pretty much from the start. She was holding the hands of other victims as she was choking back tears, trying to comfort others. We saw Josh Nolan. He was shot during the, during the shooting. He survived, but is now walking with a cane. He, too, is also trying to keep his emotions in check. As far as the jury is concerned, there's no other way to put it. They look simply exhausted. They have been listening to some very intense testimony right from the start. And today's testimony, today's arguments by prosecutors and by the defense attorneys have been very technical at times. And as far as the gunman is concerned, he has been sitting in his usual corner spot with his defense team. Once again, swiveling in his chair, his parents just footsteps away, but otherwise kind of staring at either the conference table or just straight ahead. Teresa, it will be interesting to see if the jury is sent home tonight so they can start fresh in the morning or if they do feel a need to begin their deliberations tonight after a day that has been intense, both, both emotionally as well as technically looking at the different legal arguments. Yeah, I think we could sense that heavy emotional atmosphere today, Mark. Thanks so much. Court still in session, by the way. Live look at the courtroom now. Closing arguments wrapping up any minute now. The jury will begin deliberations tomorrow one way or another. Again, they're charged to determine if the defendant was sane at the time of the shooting. Eric and how long those deliberations will take up to them. So justice uh, really still a little ways off for the victim's family. Yeah, a lot of work to do. Right. Thanks, Teresa.